this little white motherboard cost around 305 bucks and at first glance it feels like someone tried to fit full ATX quality into micro ATX frame but here's what's actually insane you're getting an 8 layer PCB Gen 5 PCI support for M.2 slots with no lane sharing and even ARGB lighting that you can control directly from Windows, no extra software required. Sounds like the perfect pick for white team build, maybe, but the real question is, does this board truly deserve the ROG name? What you're looking at is the brand new ASUS ROG Strix B 850G gaming Wi-Fi and the time of testing, it's not even on sale yet. ASUS sent us this early unit for testing and right away it's clear this isn't your average micro ATX board. Dimensions are standard for micro ATX, 244 by 244 millimeters. but what's not standard is the fact that this board uses an 8 layer PCB with 2 ounces of copper per trace. That means better stability, stronger thermal performance and top tier signal integrity, even under heavy loads. As for design, it's clean, sharp and minimal. You have got the white base, great tech, silver accents and of course a glowing ARGB ROG crest on top that looks like it was ripped straight out of the cyberpunk universe. It's called Strix, but this thing honestly feels more like a hero. Ok, inside the box you get everything you need to start building, plus a few nice surprises. There's white Wi-Fi Q antenna, a quick start guide, RG sticker flyer, spare M.2 screws and standoffs of course, a backup M.2 clip, thermal pads, a few cable ties, two SATA cables, one straight and one angled, and even RG keychain. At first glance this board doesn't look like micro ATX, it feels like it could easily stand next to full size premium models. The entire surface is covered in white PCB with grey labeling and detailing around connectors like 24 pin, dual 8 pin EPS, SATA ports and of course the VRM heatsink. Visually it's clean, straight lines, Ellen white and grey tones with nothing sticking out. Except the ROG crest about the VRM section which lights up as I said in ROGB and gives off a serious cyberpunk vibe. Now yes, the top IO shroud is plastic but the heat sinks are solid aluminum featuring that signature ROG combo of matte and glossy texture. On the side there's the word strix and below it the phrase for those who dare in a holographic print. Under lighting it reflects rainbow colors and in dark case it looks insane, this board doesn't just work, it stands out as the centerpiece of your build. The power delivery on this board looks impressive on paper. A 14 plus 2 plus 1 phase setup. But let's be real, in actual use what you get is 7 phase V core design where each phase is duplicated using doublers. So instead of 14 true phases you're getting 7 power stages with mirrored components. That's not a bad thing, for most users this offers excellent stability, since the load is distributed and temperature stay under control. Each power stage is rated for up to 80 amps, but in practice they will run at much lower loads, around 15 to 20 amps per stage. In daily use, no issue powering CPUs from Ryzen 700, 800 and now full released 900 series, including the high-end Ryzen 9950X. You also get dual 8-pin EPS connector for stable CPU, power supply and beefy VR heatsink, which means you're safe even if you plan to do some serious overclocking adventure. The board comes with 4 DIMM slots supporting up to 256GB of DDR5 RAM in dual channel mode. But here's the thing you need to know in real world usage. If you fill all 4 slots your memory will most likely run at lower speeds, higher latency and you may lose accuracy to XMP or XPO profiles. That's why it's recommended to use just 2 slots, specifically A2 and B2, which is the optimal configuration for stable overclocking and peak performance. Also, before buying RAM, always check the QAL or Qualified Vendor List on the manufacturer's website because M5 can be picky, especially with high-speed kits. Now, about boot times, our first RAM trading cycle took a painful long time, almost 10 minutes before the system posted. But once it's finished, everything stabilized. Even though M5 is known for longer boot times compared to M4, this specific board had the fastest trading cycle we have tested so far. That means if you're using 32 or 64 gigabytes 
of DDR5 RAM and your BIOS is up to date, you'll get through this part without major headaches. This board includes single PCI by 16 slot, which is directly wired to the CPU and always runs at full by 16 speed. No lane sharing, no compromises. Whether you're using the Gen 4 or Gen 5 GPUs, you're getting maximum bandwidth here. The slot is reinforced with a metal shield, so it won't sag or break under the weight of heavy GPUs like ours. And even better, there's two less release mechanism, just press the button and your GPU pops out on its own. No more wrestling with screwdrivers or risking a scratched PCB. But there's one limitation worth noting. Since this is a micro ITX board, this is the only PCI slot available. So if you're planning to add the capture card, sound card or something similar, you simply won't have room for that exhibition. For gaming rigs, it's perfect. For a more complex streaming setup, think ahead before you buy this mobile. This board gives you a total of 4 M.2 slots, 3 on the front and 1 on the back side. And the best part, no lane sharing on any of them. The first two are connected directly to CPU while the third and fourth run through the chipset now. Here's where ASUS does something smart. Slot 1 is Gen 4 and slot 2 is Gen 5. Do you follow me? That might seem contraintuitive, but it's actually brilliant. Gen 5 SSDs heat up like tiny volcanoes, and if you place them directly underneath your GPU, they will throttle, lose performance, and even raise the temperature of your whole board, SSD, and GPU. So Asus moved the Gen 5 slot to the second position, further away from the GPU with more room for heat dissipation. That's not a coincidence, that's a good engineering, as for cooling the primary M.2 slot comes with a toolless heat sink you can snap on or off with zero screws. The others use either clips or traditional standoffs, and the rear M.2, that one, uses a classic screw plus standoff combination. All four slots run at by 4 speed and support standard SSD size. Bottom line, on this segment, no compromises, smart design and actually thermal awareness. The rear panel of this board offers an impressive number of ports, especially for micro ATX form factor. Here's the breakdown. You get two video outputs, DisplayPort 1.4 supporting up to 8K at 30Hz and HDMI 2.1 capable of 4K at 60Hz. This will only work if you are using an APU or CPU with integrated graphics. As for USB ports, you get 8 Type-A ports, 2 black USB 2.0, 4 blue USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabits per second, and 2 red USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second. There's also two USB-C ports, one goes up to 10 gigabits per second and the other hits the full speed of 20 gigabits per second. Great for fast external SSDs or docking station. You also get a clear CMOS button and BIOS flashback button with LED indicator. Flashback works even without a CPU or RAM, just insert USB stick with the BIOS file into the market port. For networking, there's 2.5G LAN port using the Intel i226V chip and Wi-Fi 7 with Bluetooth 5.4 powered by Realtek 8922AA model. The audio section uses the ALC 1220P codec and includes outputs for mic, speakers and optical SPDF. One thing that might surprise you is just how long the first boot can take after installing Grow. In our case, the initial RAM training took nearly 10 minutes, which is expected to M5 platform, but still this board had the fastest training cycle we have seen compared to every other M5 board we have tested so far. Why? Because of the latest Ajiza firmware version in the BIOS itself, which dramatically improves memory detection and profile tuning, and of course, trading. That's why our recommendation is clear. Before you even power on your system for the first time, perform a BIOS flashback to the latest version. You don't need a CPU, you don't need RAM, just a formatted USB stick, the BIOS file and a single press on the flashback button. After that initial training, the system runs stable, though still lower to boot compared to M4 platform. That's just the nature of DDR5 and M5. In our test build, with 64 gigabytes of CL32 at 6000 MHz, the average boot time was around 30 seconds. For M5 platform, that's actually the best result we have seen 
so far. One of the best things about this motherboard is something we rarely see full functional ARGB lighting that you can control directly from Windows 11 with no extra software required. The ROG crest on the rear section of the board lights up with ARGB effects and is full compatible with Windows Dynamic Lighting and all you need to do is enable the option in the BIOS, then inside Windows, right click on the desktop, go to Personalize, select Dynamic Lighting and from there you can adjust the light in real time. No need Bluetooth for Armory Crate, no need for any ASUS background apps and that's a huge win for anyone who wants a clean system without unnecessary processes. So here's the bottom line, the ASUS ROG Strix B850G gaming Wi-Fi is probably the most complete micro ATX board we have tested for the AM5 platform so far. From solid build quality to super clean ARGB control and Wi-Fi 7 out of box it's just well throughout. Yeah, the VRAM is technically a 7 phase setup but it's strong enough, efficient and backed by great thermal performance. Yes, the RAM training takes time on first boot but it's faster than many other AM5 boards we have tested and once it's done you're good to go. We didn't encounter any major bugs, BIOS was stable and all our components run at full speed after flashing the latest update. So, if you're building a compact, high-performance AM5 system and want to avoid the drama or extra software, this board should absolutely be on your radar. And if this helped you out, hit the like button, subscribe for more builds and benchmarks and drop a comment below if there's a specific board you want us to text test. See you soon.